Hey everybody, Larry here, Mitchell's RCs, and uh, today we're coming back at you with part three of the RJ Speed 24 inch dragster build. And on the last episode, guys, we uh, put the 2B chassis together, we installed the backbone and the braces to hold that, and we built the front end for our steering mechanism. So now today, what we're going to be doing, switch you over here to this cam. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building the rear tower and installing the rear axle and stuff. So let me get a light turned on here to make it a little brighter for you here on this view. And we'll get started. It should adjust for a second. There we go. Okay, guys. So we need D3. be doing guys is we're going to be putting on this rear tower section this is your motor plate this is your axle holder now you get a rear plate that'll be you know for whatever lots of times your servo goes there but not on this one but it looks fit it's going to be for your uh, rear wing mount to hold up your rear wing mount this time so let's get started on this So oh, the first piece we need is right here. That's going to go right there just like that. Okay, so one plate. Get our Loctite out here. Get our screwdriver. Okay, so what we're going to do. We'll lock tight to the screw. Remember, anything going into metal, guys, or aluminum, lock tight it. Move on to that hole. And screw this on. tighten it yet and leave it slightly loose. Now why is uh, this piece is going to sit over this one guys like that. Okay. So let's get our next screw. Add a little Loctite on that one. I'm really liking these new MIP drivers guys. Really nice. And now this one's going to go on the inside like this. My arms are in your way, guys. I, I know that. Sorry about that. It's going to go on like this. Well, I'm going to have to be in the way just for a second, guys. There again, leaving it just slightly loose. That way they're offset, if you guys can see. See how they're offset just, set just slightly? That way, the motor plate can set in like this. Okay, guys? That's why it's offset like that. So, our next step will be installing the motor plate. Now, one of these should be a pan head, yes, right here, which is a flat head screw. Now, this, and it's a shorter screw. Whoa, 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 way too much Loctite came out, no biggie. I'll just soak up some on these other screws that I'm going to use. There. Now, where this one's going to go, guys, is right here. you got a little uh, recess cut in, up, cut in that one right there. As you can see, a bevel. That's where your pan head goes in. And that screws on right here to that that back post right there. Just it in, but not locking it tight quite yet. Okay, guys. Now it looks like your other ones are just going to be these regular screws. Soak up some of this WD uh, WD40 <laughs> Loctite. Put the screw in there. And once I get this screw in, then I'll tighten it all down. That way, I know all my plates are nice and even. So tighten the plate screws first. That way, it squares this plate up to those two brackets. Okay, and then 
tighten your two bracket screws. Remembering not to go crazy and over tighten them. And I don't want to put that last screw in yet. I'm going to take this screw back out right here because, guys, I am going to run a. Uh, I'm going to run a wheelie bar on this. So we get the wheelie bar out. Something you have to buy separate. They're around twenty dollars or so, guys. They're not cheap. That's, I, I like them. I like the looks of them. So let's grab that screw again. Another dab of this lock. Uh, boy, lock tight. I don't like you calling it lock tight. Little dab of this. Uh, I might have to use a longer screw. Nope. I think it does come along with screws, guys. Let me look. Yes, it does. I'm going to use the longer screws. Just because those ones are biting, but I want them to bite. I want them. I want them to bite good. These are only biting by. Let me see. Well, maybe three threads. I'd rather have more than that. So, we are going to use the longer screws that came with the came with the wheelie bar. Yeah, I like that way better. set there for a minute because now what we got to do is get that other upright right here turn this bad mamma jamma over for a second okay so here it is we'll add another bracket back here Again, I want to use the long screw. Oliver, bud, you're good. I took you out. Yeah, you're out of the kennel now, buddy. Sorry, guys. Like I said on the last video, I have a female dog that's going into uh, going into heat. So my male's being a being a little jerk. Again, guys, I'm not going to tighten this down yet until I get that other one started on there. Okay. Second here, guys. I gotta move this around. This piece is uh, going to start in the hole there. There it goes. Going into aluminum. Gotta remember. So these parts, you know, they're all pre-punched and stuff, but they're not perfect, guys. There we go. Okay. Put the cover on this real quick before I spread it everywhere. So that's where we are so far, guys. Okay. Now we got to put the top tower in. Which way does that go? I believe it goes like this. Yes. Now. These are a tight fit, guys. Real tight fit. Yeah. 
So, what I'm going to do, that slide would be nice. I'm going to set this on the edge of my table. I'm going to give it a little love tap with a, a hammer. Remember guys, this is just uh, carbon fiberglass, so don't go crazy with it. Perfect, just like that. Okay, so that's there. Now, what are they saying? How do we hold that on? Okay, so we just take one of these screws on each side, screw it in. It's going to go into that little crack right there. It's basically a pressure fit, I guess. So again, you're only going into carbon fiber here, carbon fiberglass. You don't need any uh, Loctite guys. Screw them in until it gets tight, and then that's that's good. Don't go crazy with it. That's what we'll do. So these guys are just plastic, like I was saying before. Got to pump up to the bigger two. There we go. It's just a plastic bolt that's been drilled with a hole in the top to hold the body. Okay, these are going to go right back here. I'm going to turn on this guys for a minute. So you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. That's all I'm doing right here, guys. Adding the, whoop, adding the body mount. Now I'll do the next one right there on the other side. Going in the proper hole. They go kind of tight in these holes, guys. Flip this up, guys. to the side, which I don't think it matters, but I can always change them if it does. Yeah, just like that. Let's go crazy and kill it. Okay, and there's the body mounts for the back, and there's the body mount for the front. Getting there, guys. Getting there. So now these are the caps. So you can either go cap, well, you go caps, and you screw them down below them, them holes, which they go dry. Okay? And then you go with the pin to hold your body on. The caps keep your body, to raise your body height up and down. And then the pin. I'm just going to put these on so I don't lose them. Mm. 
Hole's a little small. Might have to read it out. Yes. Yeah, hole's a little bit small. Okay, so that can be long, guys. Look at that. With the wheelie bar on, that thing's gonna be long. Well, it's 24 inch, and then I just added another 7 inch wheelie bar to it. So 31 inches long, guys. This thing isn't gonna be small. Oh, it's gonna be a blast. Okay, so let me put this uh, wheelie bar stuff back in the, the bag because I'm not ready to build that yet. That's the wheelie bar stuff. I also got a hot racing one too, but I don't know. I was I was thinking about using that on it, but I've got other ideas for this. Okay, let's see how back up this. I'm gonna lose these parts. And we get started on this. Obviously these bushings go back here. And they just poke in the holes. Just like that. Not sure. I want to put those in yet. Actually, I might have to put them in when I slide the axle. In. enjoying this. I really, uh, I like doing this kind of stuff. Solid axle shaft, guys. Direct drive for both wheels. You only get two to line up. Yep, that's all it says is two. You get four holes, but only two of them line up.
It's kind of funny. You think, uh, where well, they got four holes in there, they put four screws in this, so it would equally torque on the gear. You would think just by having two, it would allow this, this, this gear to spider, to S, you know what I mean, under power? You think it would allow it to wobble with just having two in it, one on each side. But they must know what they're doing. If I think about it, that's how my other, that's how my Pro Mod is also. Just two screws holding the gear. Yeah, that's what it calls for. Just like that. See, now it looks like it's going to get a plastic bushing. I would say. And then this. This hub here is going to go on this side with the bushing. And just kind of even the rod up on each side. And then they push them out flush. They're running theirs out flush, but that doesn't can't the gear has to be in for the motor the other side can't have flush that would push that side way out let me read this that side takes two shims press the bushing into the outside of the motor and axle mount attach the hub gear assembly to one end of the axle with two set screws tighten lightly remove the hub and grind the or file flat spots on the axle for the set screw to reset on right? this will make it much more secure add the long nylon spacer tube the bushings and slide the axle through well I see no long plastic tube here so I don't know what this is No, we're just going to throw it together the way it is because it'll stay. And I still got to uh, screw flat spots onto these. Uh, under this axle. It's too big, but I'm going to use the other one. 2.5. Doesn't fit. Alright, guys, now what size are these? It's supposed to be 2.0s. And they're not. <sighs> okay, they're standard. So I'll pull that back off. It's an Allen screw, boys. It's plastic. Got to be careful with it. Make sure you get them started right. They take two, one per side, and that's what holds these on the axles. That's why they're telling you to uh, file the axle down. But I don't have uh, my file with me, my file with me right now. And it's, it's kind of late at night, so I don't want to fire up the Dremel. I'll, I'll do this later tomorrow. I don't want to wake my wife up and everybody. So what I'll do tomorrow is I'll pull them out. I'll put a little bit of a Loctite on the bottom. Screw it in until it touches. That way I have a mark that shows me where I want it. And then I'll uh, just grind them down with my Dremel a little bit giving them a flat spot just for these two uh, Allen screws 
lock screw still gone too. Okay. I'm just trying to get roughly the same amount of line out. Uh, line. Get the same amount of axle per side. Just for a second, guys. Kidding. Standard again. Good thing they did give the Allen wrenches. Well, I have Allen wrenches, but it's just a point. the back wheels. They both spin the same time because it's a live axle. I'll have to tighten these up more. A little closer than what I've got them, but that's okay for now. And I'm still going to take them apart and uh, put, put flat spots on them. Pinion gear, the motor bolts and screws, which we don't need quite yet because we're not doing the motor installation yet. We're not doing the rest of the steering quite yet. Okay. The 
this piece is a piece that gets hooked on for that rod I was telling you guys about how to adjust the suspension on this. So you will screw this into here. See? That little ball is going to go right in here. Either one of these holes showing this one here on the paperwork. So that's the one we're going to put it in. There, does this fit that? None of this stuff is threaded, guys. You're threading it all as you do it yourself. So you want to try to start it as straight as possible. See this rod here. We'll hook on this. here we're putting in is for that rod. This is the rod that, that's going to run through to tighten everything. So we'll put that keeper on there. We'll put this little rubber grommet on there. Pass the screw up through the bottom hole. Screw this on. Make sure you keep the side on the top. Whoops, sorry guys. Make sure you keep the side on the top that goes to the back. And I just threw that stuff on the floor. No biggie. Can't find it. Second, you will get here. I'll look for that real quick. Yes. I 
to grab my flashlight. same size but it isn't. I don't know what demo for. It's a totally different size and everything. Slide that through the hole like so. Push this back here. It on. And then if you need more tension for the back, you would slide that ahead, push that rod backwards, and then tighten that up, and that's what's going to push down on the back and give you more bite. And then if you get too much bite, you'd loosen that and let it go this way, and then let that come back up. Or if you even had to, you could take it off, put it on this side, and pull it, and tighten it on that side, and take it away a little. So, that's that right there. Now... Okay, that is what that's for then, guys, okay. Let me just make sure. So, they give you one extra rod, guys, so you cut this ro extra rod down to finish your steering and then the rest of that rod you cut down to make your uh, so one rods for your steering you cut down to make it fit your steering and the other rod probably just gonna cut in half depending on how high you want the wing so that that's how that works guys right there and I'm not gonna put these on yet for the wing until I'm ready to uh, get it all painted and install it. I don't want these on because I'm just going to end up bumping into them, breaking them. We can uh, put these little pieces on real quick. Right? Yeah, see without the without the wheelie bar on there you can get into these easier. Just little buttons right there guys that I just added and these are what your your wing mounts gonna come out of so like I said you're gonna cut these down it shows these uh, at an angle so you might have to put the bend in yourself they also have a hole here in the back but it doesn't show them going in. I'm not sure I can't really tell by the picture to me it would make sense now they're going through the top okay they're going through the top and then you're bending them the same so they go back the same amount whatever you want that to go back and then you're holding them in play with a, a set screw like that but like I said I don't want to cut them down I don't want to cut that down and do that until I figure out how high I really want that wing so I got to uh, get the body all mounted on and get everything ready first and that'll be a different video mount the body but that's going to take a second so I don't know what the tie strap up for the battery 
Oh, maybe they give you the tie straps for your uh, servo wires. That's probably that might be what they give you these for for the servo wires. That up here for now. Got this. So that's how it's going to sit. Try to see if they give a dimple in the hood that tells you where the mount goes and it doesn't. I would say these have to uh, fall like that so those back pens come up in here is what I would say. So you must cut the back open on this and the, the things will tell us. Yeah it's gonna look pretty cool guys. Can't really see it from there. She is long. We'll have to cut that body shell out, get that drop down on there, finish the wheelie bar. That is going to look cool, guys. Got a lot of painting to do on this. So, I'll put this back up here if I ruin it. So, guys, this is Larry here at uh, Mitchell's RC saying I hope you enjoyed part three of the RJ Speed. 24 inch dragster build and uh, stay tuned because we'll have part 4 coming right up and that'll be look at that, <laughs> what a bunch of bounce it has, and that'll be installing the motor servo finishing the steering and uh, well yeah that'll be pretty much it until we get the body done, oh and the wheelie bar so we get the wheelie bar to put on, throw the motor in Finish up the servo. Wow, there's so much droop in this chassis, guys. I'm just like thinking for the weight of my batteries. Puts it right to the ground. When the body's on. Yeah, when the body's on, I guess the body will help hold it. See what I'm saying? Without the battery on there, it stays up where it should be. So you mount the body there. And then once you get the body on there, it shouldn't allow it to buckle, I wouldn't think. That'll help a little bit. So let me, uh, which one was that? So I'm going to put a little bit of back tension on this. On that back bone. Yeah, that stiffened her up. You see what I mean? By tightening that, that pulled that up. Put a little bit of a hump here. But once I put the... I might have a little too much of a hump. But no, actually, perfect. Once I put the battery in there, that flattens that right out. There ain't much room under them things, guys. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty low to the ground. Let me kill that light. <laughs> Look at that. Can't even see that. That's how low they are. They, these cars, they about rub. Can't even get it so you can see light coming through the underneath. You can just barely see the light, guys, right there. Right there, coming underneath. There is not much room under these things. At all. I'm trying to get you guys a shot of underneath, but... I don't know if you can see it or not, but there isn't much. Eighth inch, probably. A little more in the back, only because I, I made it that way. Mm -hmm. 
So guys, get this light off. Ah, shut the light off. So guys, like I was saying, uh, this is Larry at Mitchell's RCs. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is part three, and uh, part four will be coming right up of motor install, servo, um, motor install, servo, steering hookup. And that's about it for now, guys, and then the body. So we'll uh, see you later.